requires the encoder decoder architecture often referred to as bridge between uh, understanding and expression, uh, which are really important in uh, in the dialogue of uh, an LLM. Yes, sir. OK, so as I mentioned that uh, the encoder and decoder architecture uh, are trying to link each other like they are trying to act like as bridge because they, because they are trying to take some raw input data and try to comprehend its essence through encoding and decoding part and then transforms that whole understanding into a meaningful output through decoding. So overall, these two points trying to link each other like encoder is trying to encode the data and the decoder is trying to decode the output in large language models through generation of coherent expressions for generation of text each and every asset we require from the large language models. Uh, one more question is that you mentioned that decoder generates output one token at a time. How does this token by token generation affect the overall coherence of the output? Okay, so, um, um, I whenever whenever I try to uh, show uh, tell that token by token generation, it it will be analyzing uh, by generating output. Token by token uh, actually allow the decoder to construct a coherent narrative step step by step. Like I, I already uh, told about the sequence manner, the step by step uh, sequence, and even uh, tell, told about the storyteller me uh, mechanism. Like storyteller try to and uh, try to tell the story and craft the story tell, uh, step by step. So this overall approach maintains the contextual flow and try to ensure that each token aligns with the context established by the previous token. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, here is the third uh, important lecture of this series, uh, a course on LLM. Uh, which is on encoder decoder architecture. So I would say that after the transformer, uh, encoder and decoder architecture is the most important element in LLM. Uh, we have with us uh, our guest speaker, Ms. Uh, Tehniyat Saif, and uh, she's going to present and enlighten, enlighten us with all the details about encoder decoder architecture. So thank you very much, Ms. Tehniya Saif, for joining us and over to you for this lecture. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So hello, everyone. I hope you are doing great. Before we start exploring the encoder and decoder architecture, let's make sure we are on the same page. In the previous lecture, like we learned that transformers are like the building blocks of large language models, and their structure is based on two main parts, like the star part, the encoder and the decoder. Now it's time to deep dive into the understanding like how these two parts work in the architecture, what, is, what are their roles and how they play an important role in large language models. Now moving towards predictive side. For this, we need to have a good grasp of Python, like the language that makes the real magic happens in programming world. Some understanding of large language models like those clear, and clever algorithms that help machines understand a human language and some basic understanding of how deep learning and machine learning concepts. Don't worry, we don't dive, deep dive here. We will move forward. And then we have objectives. In our objective, we have our mission clear. We will introduce you to the fascinating world of encoder and decoder architecture by giving you a sneak peek into our training and uh, serving phases. So you will know that what will be cooking behind the transformer as we are saying that transformers are the building blocks of each and every LLM model. Now we will tackle after that, we will tackle the challenges that pop up when training and encoder and decoder architecture. Then we have agenda of our whole lecture that I will present today. Now that we have our map here, First of all, we will lay the groundwork with a warm welcome and quick intro. Then we will analyze the encoder and decoder architecture, then the architecture steps like training phase, each and every in detail. Now moving towards the quotation, like hold on to your heads because we are about to embark on a journey that bridges the gap between understanding of the expression, like 
how transformer is built up with this whole architecture and what is the role of encoder and decoder in the domain of large language models the encoder and decoder architecture is the magic wand that transforms the whole input into the um, meaningful output it's like you are uh, it's like a computer to uh, not just get what we are saying but also reply in a way that makes sense now move forward to the main part that is introduction in introduction we will introduce our star uh, performers to you that are encoder and decoder as we know and uh, we already mentioned in the previous lecture that transformer is built up with encoder and decoder architecture they are a dynamic duo like they work seamlessly to process input and try to output the output in a sequence and relevant manner in encoder it takes the raw input data and gives it a makeover it's like translating a sentence into a special code like uh, you are trying to uh, add a code that captures the essence of the input it uh, for example when you try to add a when you try to take a sponge and put in a bowl of water you want to take each and every drop of water by that sponge similar work will be done by encoder encoder will take each and every point of input in that sponge and then what start is processing with further steps like decoder what will become in output and each and everything same thing will be done by llms like it sucks the text messages images audio each and everything available uh, like for chatbots and the large language models during its process the encoder turns it all into a context rich vectors for its output vector and then we will move towards decoder in decoder it takes the context vector from the encoders and bring that all of the input that we will take into the input context through that sponge vector to the live imagine it like a puppeteer like when uh, like a puppeteer trying to pull the strings of a marinade why he is trying to pull the strings of the marinade actually he is trying to control each and every move each and every movement of the puppet like as per the requirements as per the show script each and every requirements similar work will be done by the decoder decoder will take will generate output vectors one by one in terms of tokens for building up an output sequence like a story that will be unfold itself one by one by each and every single word and then we have their working like how they work together like how they work individual basis and then we will discuss how they work on together basis all right let's see them in action like how the encoder and decoder works together the encoder takes the first stage by analyzing the steps step by step to dance the guidelines that will be taken as an input and trying to pull out important details like you try to imagine you are translating a sentence from english to french which is not possible without basic understanding and exploring skill set of any kind of language uh, i am discussing here the french language you also may uh, take an, any example of any other language set as well you try to understand the basics and guidelines behind that language only then you are able to understand the impact the working process and the output vector you are able to obtain through that language the encoder does the similar work behind the scenes then comes the decoder it takes the context of whole skill set that we are able to get through the input and try to understand with the point of encoder and start stacking the output sentence by understanding each and every input word and try to arrange them in an order remember that whenever we try to decode something or whenever we try to get something from the decoder we have to arrange them in an order like start from the uh, step 1 step 2 step 3 word 1 word 2 and so on carry on but remember the sequence is the main asset each word will come which will come one after another has to be decided that will be discussed in the some uh, main components in the architecture of in some other slides it's like a puzzle each token fits perfectly into the next like creating a smooth and meaningful output that will be understandable by the large language models as well as the user who are utilizing that transformer that large language models for the purpose of conversation and any other thing this teamwork is what lets the llm system understand your input 
and correspond with context. Okay, then we will move towards the architecture. Now get ready for behind the scenes look at the architecture itself. We will try to highlight it with the help of act play, like encoder acts as action one, actor one that will play an encoder role, and actor two that is decoder, which will play the act, uh, second actor acts. The encoder get things rolling by turning the input sequence into a classy vector representation. Think of it as giving as you are trying to give the um, input to a makeover so that it is it will be highlighted as a spotlight for the decoder so that whenever uh, we move towards the decoder, which is the real showstopper, it takes the, the classy word which will take as an input and try to transform into an output sequence one after an another. Similarly, both the encoder and decoder have different styles, like they are different in categories, their capabilities, their working sequence. Here we will uh, take an example for understanding, for better understanding, uh, like, a, like an example of a regular car and a supercar. Both are car, both are uh, a model of car, different model of car, their working, uh, and their working efficiencies, their capabilities, each and everything varies. But rem uh, remind that the domain, the car, the model, the uh, asset, which will try to understand the car is same. Only the difference is between their models. Similar work is done by encoder and decoder. Both purpose is same as one is trying to get some input and other is trying to uh, give us some output as per their working capabilities and usage. OK, then we will move towards the architecture. Here we will discuss the architecture step by step, starting from the input sequence. After an action sequence, the question will be raised in our mind that what will be the requirements of that architecture components? Like we, uh, like you have to understand it as a conversation where you have to listen the part carefully, the listener part carefully, and then you try to understand and deep dive into the main concepts, into the input, into the output, and each and every component. For that purpose, you have to picture this in your mind, like the encoder is an attentive listener. In your conversation, you need to listen each and every instruction carefully, so that whenever we try to process all of these input uh, points in decoder, similar points will be highlighted in decoder, but with different working processes. Here, for it well. Start from input embedding. Think of it like an input vector as a series of words or token. The encoder transforms each and every single word into information packed vectors. Like whenever we try to give some input to the to uh, input embeddings technique, these are called tokens that will be passed one after and another as an input token to the uh, transformer architecture. Like here we have the separately cat ate the mouse that is a total sentence but we are trying to take it single after single word it's like giving each word a unique fingerprint that holds its meaning and context then we have some positional encoding as we try to pass the encoding components as packets and asserts to the encoder architecture now we try to organize them with the help of positions encoder doesn't understand the word orders like we do but we try to add some position encoding so that it would also able to understand the position and order sequence which we want that encoder will able to understand and try to highlight it those importings will be at like GPS markers, like we are trying to each uh, send each and tell each and every word in a sequence order. Then we have multi head self attention. I will not uh, deep dive into the self attention and multi head steps because these steps are already discussed in transformer lecture in previous video. This is where, uh, uh, like I will discuss here, this is where the things uh, get really cool. The important looks each and every word embeddings and trying to pay attention to other word embedding too. Imagine it like each word, each word is trying to talk to its neighbor and uh, decide and you are that uh, uh, one who will decide how much attention to give each other. Like whenever we try to talk to our neighbor, we are the one who will decide that. What kind of conversation will be uh, going in between us? What, what uh, kind of relationship will be in between me and my neighbor that will be decided by the, this layer, the self-attention layer. 
this multi head attention splits the encoder and decoder architecture into multiple parts while focusing on the main input assets and requirements one by one. Then we have some normalization, add normalization and some connections here. These are the main points where we try to connect one input to the other as we already divide them into chunks. So here our work start like how uh, one part, how the CAD component will be related to the uh, eight component each and every step to make sure our encoder isn't overwhelmed. We use layered normalization like layer normalization and residual connection. Normalization work starts organizing the layers and then residual part start connecting these layers each and every with one another. It's like having a balancing act like one have to balance the lower layer and then try to balance the upper layer. Only then you are able to move step by step and move forward. And then we'll move towards feed forward networks. After the attention phase, we'll let each world embeddings go through its own mini brain, a feedback network. Uh, that mini brain is, actual, the, uh, is actually containing the whole asset of that input embeddings and sequence and each and everything. That will be when that will be passed to the output vector. That output vector is uh, just act like the uh, sub dish. In input, you're trying to add some essence, some input sequence, some seasoning into the input embeddings. And then output vector is like a proper dish. You are trying to serve something to uh, something in a dish to the person. As the encoder processes all the input tokens with some norms like seasoning. It eventually serves up an output vector. So remember, whenever we try to uh, we try to present something uh, something to someone in a dish, we have to understand. We have to keep in mind that each and every factor in that output in that input sequence will impact our output in decoder form. But the story will not be handled. We will discuss some major parts other as, as well. These are uh, that will be in decoder. Now let's meet decoder. In decoder, again we have some components like we have some embedding, some attention headers, some normalization, each and everything. Here, target encoder embedding similar is uh, just like uh, uh, similar to the encoder steps. The decoder starts itself by transforming each and every input in, uh, as an output into the embeddings. These embeddings are like generated output against each and every factor which we're able to get through input sequence. Then we again we try to position them just like we do in the input session. Step by step, like we have to follow the sequence, we have to understand the sequence and even LLM models like with large language models also need to analyze what will come first, then second, then third. No sequence will be uh, will have to be uh, each and every uh, sequence uh, LLM models has to follow some sequence that will be only handled by the positional encoding part of that whole architecture. Then we have again self attention layer like we do in encoder, but in decoder we are trying to apply some trick like we try to generate response one by one by generating by looking at the decoder by uh, whenever we try to generate the uh, next word, we have to look at the previous word so that it will try to generate some link. Like here, I am presenting the multi head attention uh, layer, self attention layer, as I try to link it with the transformer lecture. Like there, we try to present the uh, whole purpose, the requirements, each and everything. Similar work here will be done by the self attention and these uh, layers. Like they try to link the previous one with the next one. So they uh, they're all in a sequence. This prevents it from leakage, from uh, uh, unable to understand, or from uh, non sense completion strategies and each and everything. No more discussion about it. Encoder, then we have encoder and decoder attention. To make sure our response match the input, the decoder also pay attention to the encoder. Like encoder may also do attention work similar way decoder to attention and understanding the sequence order as well. As you know that the sequence is the main asset of that whole encoder and decoder architecture. 
then we have again some layer and normalization factors as well then feed forward networks in feed forward the decoder tries to con uh, tries to continue its creative process by letting each and every word through its own neural network this will help this whole architecture this whole decoder ar architecture will help you to predict each and every word step by step and then we have some other features as well for example uh, here we will, the decoder here acts like a dj uh, that tries to do remixing of a song with the words but tries to understand that whenever we try to uh, organize them like a sand scale it has to be layer by layer token by token until the whole structure stands tall similar to your imagination okay then we have the training phase now the time is uh, to do the training of this whole architecture as how we will train the whole data set. Think of the, this whole architectures as the model bootcamp. To train it, we need a collection, like collection of uh, input and output pairs, like a data set, which will be utilized as the requirements of training. We feed all this architecture, this data set to the model, and then uh, it will try by fixing its own mistakes. It's like uh, a teacher trying to teach a kid, a, uh, my father trying to teach his son, like how you how you will ride a bike. He will not uh, teach you how will uh, how you will sit on the bike, how you will uh, pedal uh, the cycle, how you will step on this uh, the pedal. Nothing like that. He will just teach you some guidelines, like how to ride it, how to move forward, how to take back each and every step that is conceptually required and that is helpful actually helpful in your prediction work and then the mains as a start where the kid try to learn it from falling down and getting back each and every second each and every term, time like try try again till you succeed each time whenever it get back it will learn a new lesson like this lesson will be helpful in both terms encoder and decoder like they have it and they, have, they try to understand the uh, uh, point, the conversation which is running behind that whole uh, algorithm, the whole architecture, each and every step, and try to learn a new lesson with better understanding. Similar will be done by LLMs. And then we have teacher enforcing training. But wait, uh, for teacher uh, training force, we have some special tricks as well. Okay. It's like uh, the coach is trying to guide you step by step, as I already mentioned in the previous slide, that father is trying to help you analyzing the steps, the guidelines to ride the bike. Similar will be, similar will be uh, uh, help you to understand this teacher enforcing training. This method is like training wheels on a bike, helping each other to find their balance. Similarly, in LLMs, it's like you try to correlate the previous question with the current out, previous question output with the current input so that you are trying to understand the context as I am uh, uh, repeatedly trying to uh, analyze uh, you and trying to make sure that you are able to understand the context behind the input sequence, the output sequence, and what are the main requirements in encoder and decoder architecture. And then we have some softmax layer. Imagine like uh, you are picking the next word in a story. The decoder will also do the same by, with the back, but here it will do with probabilities. It tries to calculate the chances of occurrence of each and every word, like what will become next, what will become in previous word, what is the previous word, and what will be predicted as the next word. Okay, then uh, uh, where the probability and chances occurrence come, there will be a chance to pick up the word. These are the strategies like picking the word with the highest probability is the main essence of this model as well as in softmax layer, like you, do, you are trying to understand the context of the words as well. It's like deciding what topping you will be able to put on the pizza. But remember, every time you put topping on the pizza, you have to analyze the taste context as well. And then we have generation of new data. Now let's take show to the stage 
like the serving phase. Picture this like uh, the occurrence of a concern. The start token, uh, the start token uh, uh, kicks things off. It's like uh, you're trying to pressing uh, uh, play on a song. The recurrent layer takes over, updating uh, uh, the state from the encoder. Then comes the big reveal, the dense softmax layer. It's like uh, you are um, trying to add a magician pulling a rabbit out of his head. Like here in this case, the probabilities of a trans for each word, like he, the, all, uh, it's already decided when, uh, when the magician will try to get the rabbit out of his head, as he already tried to put the rabbit in his head. Only then he is able to get that rabbit out of his head. And finally, the word starts flowing step by step by drafting a sequence. It's like watching a puzzle come together piece by piece. And then uh, now we will move towards different architectures. Like uh, we, we, uh, we knew that a transformer is the main asset behind each and every uh, as building block each and, uh, behind each and every LLM model. Now, it's time to understand the other architectures. In large language models, the encoder and decoder are different beasts. Imagine you had a superhero update like in LLMs in LLMs, uh, the RNN network gets swept out for transformer blocks. Think of these blocks like superstar acts. They that uh, play special attention to certain words, adding layers of depth to the performance. It's like you are trying to display a superhero model power to understanding the generation of text, to understanding the summarization, each and every step layer by layer. And also we have to analyze the models understanding. The architecture is similar. The architecture that is transformer, that is based on encoder and decoder is similar throughout all of these evolutionary algorithms that are BERT, T5, GPT-3, um, Falcon, Lama 2, each and every. The architecture remains same but the requirements, the input embeddings, the output vary. And then we have some challenges. OK, the feedback. These architectures can be complex, like solving a tricky puzzle. LLMs demand a lot of memory and computer resources, like we know that we are working on large language models, which definitely require higher resources, higher required memory requirements, parameters requirements, hyperparameters, each and every thing. Thing. But remember, you have to efficiently manage the resources as it is the key, like making sure everyone is getting a slice of the cake at the party that will be tuned the system setting for the best performance. After that, you will try to uh, we are trying to handle different types of data and sequences like a bunch of calls. But remember, whenever we try to arrange the bunch of balls, it will get tricky. Then we have conclusion, and that's our wrap up. You have just been um, on an epic journey through an encoder and decoder architecture. Attention mechanism and neural networks are trying to create something truly remarkable. Like the architecture is like a crystal ball showing us a future where large language models, it's going to get even more mind blowing things. Keep your seatbelt faster because we are trying to learn the future of language that is even brighter than ever. So that's all from my side, sir. Thank you very much for this very uh, nice journey about uh, encoder and decoder and their application in the large language model. So uh, I have some questions. Uh, why is the encoder decoder architecture often referred to as bridge between uh, understanding and expression, uh, which are really important in uh, in the dialogue of uh, an LLM? Yes, sir. OK, so as I mentioned that uh, the encoder and decoder architecture uh, are trying to link each other like they are trying to act like as bridge because they because they are trying to take some raw input data and try to comprehend its essence through encoding and decoding part and then transforms that whole understanding into a meaningful output through decoding. So overall, these two points trying to link each other, like encoder is trying to encode the data and the decoder is trying to decode the output in large language models through so generation of coherent expressions for generation of text, each and every asset we require from the large language models. Okay, 
Uh, one more question is that you mentioned that decoder generates output one token at a time. How does this token by token generation affect the overall coherence of the output? Okay, so um, I whenever whenever I try to uh, show uh, tell that token by token generation, it it will be analyzing uh, by generating output token by token. Uh, actually, allow the decoder to construct a coherent narrative step step by step like. I, I already uh, told about the sequence manner, the step by step uh, sequence, and even uh, tell, told about the storyteller me uh, mechanism. Like storyteller, try to and uh, try to tell the story and craft the story tell, uh, step by step. So this overall approach maintains the contextual flow and try to ensure that each token aligns with the context established by the previous token, and then only then. It will try to link the current token with the previous one, and then we will able to get our input sequence and output sequence. So this overall step captures the refinement of the input and trying to output and trying to generate the natural sounding outputs in large language models. Very well said. Uh, one more question is that in the context of large language models, we know that the evolution from RNN to transformer blocks. Uh, how you think that the attention mechanism of transformer uh, blocks uh, the enhanced architectures performance for the large language models? So in large language models, uh, as we know, and transformer blocks are the language uh, are the building blocks, and the attention mechanism is trying to enhance the performance of the overall model by allowing the weights, model weights that play an important role into the model by giving the importance of each and every word simply into a sequence by giving different words into a sequence. This dynamic prioritization actually enables us helps us to enable the model to create complex relationship and dependencies between words by enhancing the ability to generate coherent and contextually reach out. So this overall shift from traditional RNNs to attention based transformers helps us to empower the architecture to handle uh, like we try to handle long range dependencies and try to capture hints like we try to contribute higher quality language processing tasks. Like we try to contribute in large language models. OK, uh, you also discussed the challenges of handling diverse data types and sequences with varying lengths. Uh, can you please also elaborate on how these challenges impact the training phase and its quality? Sure, sir. So it's like handling diverse data types and sequences uh, with varying lens that will complicate the training process. So for this purpose, it requires de designing efficient preprocessing pipelines like uh, you try to handle like you try to handle different data formats and ensure uniform. Do, uh, like when when you try to uh, when we uh, when you try to do training, accommodation varying lens may involve padding or truncating sequences like potentially leading to loss of information. So this overall, all of these challenges lies in finding the right balance between preserving context and managing output computational complexity. So this overall overall training process and divergence process, as well as uh, challenges, which helps us impact uh, to understand the impact of quality and coherence of the generating output. OK, uh, fair enough. And the one last question that I have that. Uh, uh, can you please uh, give us some real world examples of applications where this encoder and decoder architecture has really made a significant impact on the language processing tasks? Sure, sir. So certainly the encoder and decoder architectures has revolutionized machine translation like Whenever we try to take an input sequence in large language models, we try to generate an output sequence in one after another. Like, we, but what we require from each and every uh, lang large language models. It also helps 
in text summarization, image captioning, chatbots, each and every step which will be done by natural language processing and chat uh, large language models. So mainly they are you help us in un natural language conversation understanding. Many thanks. This was a fascinating lecture and uh, uh, I thank you all for attending this lecture.